Hey everybody, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is episode number 123. You had a Spaceballs joke you wanted to make. I'm just going to let you do it. Go ahead, fire away. Well, it's the same combination as my luggage. <laughs> Not bad. Okay, so uh, this episode we're going to be talking about the expansion draft that happened just earlier today. Uh, as you're watching this, it's probably going to be the next day, of course. But um, we'll be talking about that. Also, uh, some of the things that are happening with... Maybe some free agents that might be coming to the Sharks. What else? Sure. Uh, the Aiden Hill trade that brought in a new goaltender for the San Jose Sharks. Uh, what is that going to mean for Martin Jones? Mm. There can only be one 31. <laughs> uh, hockey moving to back to ESPN from uh, when it was there way back when. Yeah. And uh, some other stuff coming. Cool. And uh, just so you guys know, I know it looks like we're sitting in the same room, but this is actually... Uh, thanks to your Super Chat money, Super Producer Jason was able to do some really fancy stuff with green screens. So we're not actually sitting in the same room. In fact, if I was sitting in the same room, I wouldn't be able to do this. <laughs> Who has a tortilla in their pocket? So for those of you listening on the podcast, that was me hitting Aaron with a, a mini tortilla. Um, I, I did hit you. I didn't get you in the face. I was trying to hit the face. Got the chest, I think. Yeah, your aim's terrible. Well, you do what you can. Yep. So is what it is. In any case, uh, I was going to say, uh, the, the merchandising to me, uh, we're going to start seeing shirts now instead of the toaster. We're going to start seeing a uh, flying tortilla. <laughs> uh, beware a flying tortilla <laughs> <laughs> maybe for the Fin Factor. Fantastic. In any case, uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about the expansion draft that just happened uh, for us uh, earlier today, for you guys, maybe tomorrow, or, or sorry, maybe yesterday, I guess. Yeah. Um, I'm on fire right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. I saw the, the picks that they made, and I have to say I was just generally un underwhelmed by the, the picks that they made. There's a few guys... You know, uh, Giordano, Eberly, uh, Donskoy, Dunn. There's a few names that made sense to me, but uh, there's a lot of them that just didn't make sense at all. So, I don't know. How did you feel about that draft? Yeah, I, I was kind of uh, not shocked, but a little disappointed, I guess, because there's some really good players that were not taken. Now, we don't know everything that, that has happened yet because there's going to be trades that will be announced tomorrow for us tomorrow. Um, so there's going to be some reasons of why some of these top end players weren't taken, but I thought for sure Tarasenko or Carey Price, one of those guys would have gone just to have for pure marketing purposes of the team uh, to help sell tickets and, and to get butts in seats. So um, although I don't know if they're going to actually have that problem because there's so many people excited about having hockey in Seattle that I think they uh, sold out their season tickets, I think like the first hour or something wow. when they went live and not thinking about that. But anyway, you know, either way, it, you got to have some kind of star power. So I think this team was kind of built from the back end out. Um, so they're going to be a very defensive-minded team, probably a stingy defensive team that won't score a lot of goals but won't be giving up a lot of goals. Yeah. So I think it's going to be frustrating to watch <laughs> these games play out. <laughs> it's going to be a, a slower hockey, not like Vegas where they're fast action, you know, end-to-end -end pretty much in exciting games. I think these games will be a little bit slower paced and, yeah. and less so. So not as exciting. Okay. Well, uh, from the Sharks, at least, uh, uh, the player that they lose, and I say lose with quotes, really, Alex True. Um, this is a guy that played a handful of games for the Sharks, but basically spent the majority of his time uh, with the Barracuda. But you had a good reason as to why they would have wanted to take Alex True, and it kind of goes back to the whole marketing perspective. Yeah, I think uh, they probably looked at the Sharks' protected list and said, oh, man, we really got to take one of these guys. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at them. And uh, Alex True actually played in Seattle in the WHL for three seasons, so uh, he was familiar with, or they're familiar with him, and he, as well as he's familiar with the area. Um, when they announced the pick uh, in front of their crowd, like, I don't know if you, did you watch I some did of watch it? it? Yeah. When they announced it, uh, there was a lot of cheering in the crowd, and I was kind of shocked. I was like, oh, well, that makes sense, because he's Kind of, kind of not from Seattle, but he played in Seattle for a while. So um, the only hockey they had up there was a WHL for a long time. So they're very familiar with him. Um, I think he's going to be. He's probably. He's not going to start. He's not going to be in the starting lineup. He's. Uh, but he'll be in the AHL team, and they don't have anyone, so they have to kind of fill their cupboards because there's nothing in it. So um, probably one of those guys, just like he was in the Sharks, that will get a call up, get some. You know, if somebody gets hurt, he'll be get called up. He'll probably be that fourth line center if they need one. Yeah. Um, so, but good, good opportunity for him. Uh, also, kind of helps open up some things for the Sharks in terms of uh, that fourth line center, which yeah, and, and that fourth line center right now um, looks to be uh, Dylan Gambrell again, right? Uh, because Doug Wilson had said he's going to be reaching out and to uh, some free agents looking for 
a true third line center. Now this to me again is is a good opportunity for Dylan Gambrell uh, to not have to match up against guys that he's probably not really primed to match up against, right? Mm-hmm. He's been facing those other third lines, uh, some of the middle six, like the second line guys as well. Um, this gives him an opportunity to kind of play against the other teams, I don't want to say trash, but their, <laughs> their fourth line guys, right? Um, so I think that's he's better suited to, to taking those guys on. And whoever the Sharks do end up picking up for that third line role, um, hopefully, again, be better suited to taking on that middle six instead. Mm-hmm. Now, we had talked a little bit about uh, some of the guys that might fill that role that are uh, in, in free agency right now, and hopefully Doug Wilson gets an opportunity to pick up one of these guys. Um, did you want to just kind of run through some of these names? I know there was a couple of them. I know uh, Casey Zizekas was, mm-hmm. for me, one of my favorite ones out of the whole list. Uh, you know, play for the Islanders. And he was one of those guys that was just very good defensively, but he was very hard to play against in the offensive zone as well. So yeah. he's one of those guys that I would love to see uh, the the Sharks pick up. Is there what other names did you want to call out here? Uh, Derek Broussard and Derek Step uh, two Derek's Broussard and, and Stepan uh, or Stepan Stepan mm-hmm. I don't know Stepan Stepan Wolf yeah. Stepan <laughs> Stepan. Not going to work here anymore. Not going to work here. Anyway, uh, I like those two guys. I think uh, they kind of bring a little bit more of an offensive punch uh, as well as being defensive responsibly mm-hmm. defensive, so a third-line center that is going to help out the Sharks' third line. Um, I think Nick Bonino would be another good one, yeah. and it's actually a former Sharks pick, <laughs> so it would be kind of funny if he was, you know, actually played for the Sharks and yeah. came back into the organization. Um, there's some other ones in there that I didn't quite like as much. Um, Mikhail Granlund is one of them. I think he's a little bit too small. He is offensive-minded, but uh, a little too small for me. And uh, Paul Stastny is another one that I really like him as a player, but he's a guy that cannot stay healthy. So if if the Sharks end up getting him, you're not going to get 82 games out of him. You're going to get maybe 70, maybe yeah. even less. And, and he's also 35 years old. So right. signing those contracts, they're going to want multiple years to kind of guarantee that they can play in the NHL. But anyone that's 35 and over, if you sign that contract, or if the Sharks sign that contract and they happen to retire get injured and don't play, they still count towards the cap hit. Right. So uh, it's a little more riskier for the Sharks, and at this point, you know, the Sharks aren't going to want to take on one of those kinds of contracts. They have enough of those already. Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> sure. And with, with Stasny, like, we were looking at uh, face-off percentages, and, and I agree with you. I think the Sharks should be looking for a more defensive-minded uh, third-line center. So a guy like Granlin, uh, being on the smaller end, being a little bit more on the offensive-minded, um, maybe isn't exactly the best uh, idea for the Sharks right now. So... You would think that they would go with somebody who's a little more defensive, like a Derek Stepan, like Brandon Sutter. That was another one. Brandon Sutter did really well with faceoffs, I believe. He was one of the top faceoff guys of the people that we talked about on this list. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one of the key things that the Sharks should be looking at is uh, defensive centers, number one, but also the ability to take the faceoff. Why do they want a third-line center in the first place? Why are they going after this guy? It's because they want to take the pressure off of... Logan Couture and mm-hmm. Tomas Hurdle for those defensive zone starts. Well, what better way to do that than to get a guy who's solid defensively and is good with the faceoffs? So um, guys that fit that bill again, we go back to Casey Sezikas for me. Um, he had pretty good faceoffs and whatnot. So I, I don't know. I think I'm, I'm with you there. I think Paul Stasny, even if he wasn't getting injured, as, as you were saying, and, and the age restriction um, or, or complication, you can say, um, he was putting up points, but that's not what you necessarily want out of this third line center in this role for the Sharks. Uh, would you agree or? No, I kind of want a mix of both. Okay. I want someone who is defensive responsibly but can also have a scoring touch or at least help his line mates out. Um, definitely want somebody that could be the guy for defensive zone faceoffs as well as a penalty killer. Take some of that penalty killing off of Hurdle mm-hmm. and Coacher, get them rested, get them better quality ice time that's more offensive minded, I guess you can say. Um, but I also don't want, like, to me, like, Travis Zajac and, and Sutter for one. Sutter for sure is a very defensive minded guy, probably going to win lots of faceoffs, but not going to score a lot of points. That's right. almost a guarantee. Um, someone like Stepan or, or Bonino is going to give you at least you know 10 goals, 10 to 15 goals, whereas Sutter is going to give you maybe five. Okay. That's a big difference. Yeah. That's, that's a lot. So I think uh, that third line center should have kind of a, a, a mix of both. Um, Definitely the first thing that should be is is the defensive mindedness yes. though. And and to relieve those top guys of the penalty killing aspects. I think if we look at defensively responsible and we look at um, solid in the face off dot and has a little bit of a punch, we're looking at probably Sezikis or Benino. Mm-hmm. So 
There you go, Doug Wilson. You've, you've already got the scouting report done from the Fin Factor here. Uh, pick up Casey Sezegas. I'm, I'm sure he's Pena. watching us nightly. Of course he is. Yeah. He's just waiting for the next. He's been just sweating out the next episode, just waiting for us to come back. Um, a guy that will be on the team, though, and I'm very excited about this. Aiden Hill. The Sharks go out and they trade a second rounder with Yosef Koshinash for Aiden Hill and a seventh. Um, uh, the seventh was Joe Will saying, give me <laughs> yeah. that seventh, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, I right. laughed when I saw that. I was like, oh, that's Joe Will going, <laughs> get that seventh in there. Yeah, of course. Need it. Get that extra player. Why yeah. not? Um, so, okay. There was some mixed reaction amongst the fan base on this one. Um, not not about the goalie himself necessarily, although some people, of course, are just doomsday, right? Uh, but about the cost, about giving up a second along with Koshinaj. Now, I don't have a problem sending Koshinaj. That's fine. You get a contract off the books. But um, the the second, I don't really have a problem with the second round pick. And you're shaking your head right now saying, basically looks like you agree with me. Mm -hmm. So let me just kind of spell this out the way that I see it. And this is how Doug Wilson does this all the time with his first round draft picks to guys like Evander Kane, right? Um, If you were to go get a goaltender and you were to draft a goaltender, right? And you're going to use your second round pick to draft that goalie. Is it such a problem that you're now using that as a trade instead of using it in a draft? Because really what you're doing is you're getting the same player that you're like, okay, you know what? That guy is a solid goalie. I think he's going to be good. You're fast forwarding his career just a little bit by giving him some NHL experience. So if you were to tell me that I'm going to use my second round draft pick on a goaltender who's pretty solid prospect, we're, we're pretty sure he's going to be playing some NHL games. And we already know that he's got this much experience of NHL experience. Wouldn't you draft that player? I mean, I would. And so to give up a second to do that, to get that guy, who cares if it's in draft and then you wait a few years for him to get to that point versus you trade that pick to go just get that player? It's a guarantee. Yeah. It's a guarantee that you're getting an NHL caliber player versus a crapshoot if you're not going to get, you know, drafting somebody. So Aiden Hill was a third round draft pick. Yeah. So they. Basically, the Arizona Coyotes drafted him in the third round, developed him for many years, and then he turned into a second-round pick for somebody else new, right. which Arizona is probably going to muck that one up. So, I mean, this is not for this upcoming draft, which is on Friday. This is for next year's draft, the second-round pick. Right. So it's not um, – who knows what the draft – will look like next year. We don't know how the how the prospects are going to be looking, if it's going to be any good. But you have to imagine the Sharks are not going to finish seventh worst this season. That's the assumption. That's the assumption. That the Sharks are going to do better if they make playoffs. That second round pick is now a later second round right. pick, which is then the what? The 40, the 50, 60 overall player sure. versus a 35 to 40 overall player. Right. That's the assumption. So I'm not so... You know, and the Sharks are going to be moving. Doug Wilson said they're going to be moving more assets and getting more picks mm-hmm. coming in, maybe even before Friday. Who knows? Yeah. So um, there's going to be some movement. There's going to be some stuff that will be that will be changing between now and then. The only reason I make the face while you're, you were saying that was, <laughs> um, gosh, last season I was so hopeful. You know, I'm just looking like, man, we look like a pretty decent team, right? Um, and a lot of it has to do with COVID and everything else. Sure, fine, why not? Um, but yeah, it's hard to be like overly optimistic out of the gate this season. I don't want to have like a third season where I'm like, oh yeah, we're gonna be okay, we're gonna be fine, and then it just all falls off the rails again. Well, it's way too early to yes, tell now because the roster so. is gonna be completely different. Maybe right. not completely different, but the roster is gonna look different between now and opening season. Right. Right. Well, uh, Aiden Hill hopefully gets us a little bit closer to making the playoffs. He has a career, I think, 909 save percentage and like two something. I can't remember what it is. Actually, I actually got it on the board here. 2.79 goals against average. I'm going to reference the board now and then people just deal with it. <laughs> um, and, and against the Sharks this season, he was like a 944 save percentage and a 1.7 something goals against average. So that at was, least we don't have to deal with him. <laughs> that was every backup goalie. That is had that against probably the Sharks. true. Yeah, that's fairly accurate. Thank you for that, by the way. Uh, so anyway, uh, now what does this mean? for Martin Jones. Okay, so there's a few options here. There's obviously everybody's pointing towards buyout, right? Um, Is there any conceivable world where Martin Jones is still on the team and plays it out and gets another shot of being basically like the 1B in this situation if Aiden Hill is the guy? Or are the Sharks just going to go out and get that veteran, which we've heard, uh, getting that veteran 
uh, backup goaltender for Aiden Hill. So um, there's three kind of different ways. Of, I guess four if you just push him down to the AHL. But there's kind of different scenarios here. What do you envision as the most likely? I think um, I don't think the Sharks are done. I don't think Martin Jones is going to be playing on the Sharks. I think he's going to get bought out. Now, Martin Jones, to me, is still a NHL goalie, and I'm sure there's people laughing right now. But <laughs> you take away that contract, he's definitely an NHL goalie. You give him, you let's say the Sharks buy him out, and he's going to sign somewhere. To me, he's going to sign somewhere in the league as a backup with the league minimum, maybe a million dollars, maybe less, maybe whatever the league minimum is, 750, 800. Yeah. Um, would you have Martin Jones as a backup goalie for $800,000 a year? Sure. Yes, I would. I don't think he's a starter anymore, but I think he's a guy that can give you experience. He's been to the Stanley Cup final. He's not that old. He's not old at all, actually. Um, and I think he's in the right system could be a good goalie for a team, a good backup goalie. So I don't think he's going to be out of the league, but I also don't think the Sharks will be able to trade him because of his contract. Yeah, um, so I have a couple thoughts on on the uh, trading him, actually. I feel like, and this other teams have done this too, I think Toronto did it most recently, was the bounce him from one team to retain half, have them retain half of what's left, and then going to the team that he actually wants to go to. Now, you have to give up a couple assets maybe to make that work, but there are certain ways to go about doing that without having to go through the, the cost of a buyout. Um, I don't know that giving up assets along the way to make that happen is worth it, hmm. more so than having to pay the extra 1.667, whatever it is, for the last three years beyond his contract uh, if you do the buyout. But, I mean, I think there are some, some ways around getting past the dollar amount of his contract, right? I don't, I don't think the buyout is as big of a deal monetarily, monetarily wise for mm -hmm. the Sharks. The cap hit isn't as big. If, you did, if they did the buyout last season or before last season and it counted last season, that's way worse. It got extended longer and it was a higher cap hit. Now it's a lot less. And we are assuming with a full season of normalness this year that the cap is now going to be yeah. going up. So imagine in the Sharks be paying him for another, what, four seasons after this if they buy him out or five seasons. Yeah. His, his cap hit's going to hit, but those seasons, the cap hits or the cap is going to go up. So the hit is going to be less and less each year. Right. So I don't think it's as big of a deal now. Um, and I'm not worried about it. I think that's the direction the Sharks are going to go in to me. Okay. And then the final thought I had on our Martin Jones, and we'll move on. Um, you had mentioned the system, right? Mm. Uh, if he goes into a team where there's better defensive play around him, and this is something that I've kind of gone back to in previous uh, Fin Factor seasons, saying that, gosh, the defense around Martin Jones or around any goalie, Devin Dubnik, Aaron Dell, doesn't matter. Um, those numbers are going to suffer so long as that defense is not playing uh, to Bob Bugner's system, uh, keeping the puck out of those high danger areas, which, by the way, was one of the things that they hit on with, with Aiden Hill was his high mm -hmm. danger save percentage was good, right? So I think it almost says we're not really going to get any better defensively. <laughs> so we're going to hope that this guy can, you know, replicate that high at danger least, save percentage. At least they know what they're working with this time. Y there you go. Or at so, least they're vocal about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like. Like you said, he's maybe not a starter anymore, but I think I feel like a change of scenery for him could do him real well mm -hmm. in this league still. I think you're right. He still is an NHL caliber goaltender, just maybe not what we thought he was when we first got him, mm -hmm. right? Maybe not that anymore. So hopefully, you know, he gets an opportunity to play somewhere else uh, and, and he can kind of show that, you know, yeah, if you guys play defense around me, I'm not that bad. Uh, I'm kind of hoping for that because then it kind of validates what I've been saying the entire time, and I love being right. You guys know that. Um, okay, so. I mean, well, imagine this. Okay. A look at uh, Thomas Grice. Yes. Former Sharks goalie, went on to play in Detroit, then he went to the Islanders, mm -hmm. and he became one of, now he wasn't a Vezina winner, but they won the Jennings Trophy. Him and, uh, I forgot who he was with. Um, but anyway, they they he became this all of a sudden great, one of the best, better goalies in the league. Now, is he the best goalie in the league? I don't think so. But the system plays well to it. Barry Trott's system plays well to it. So if if, uh, if Martin Jones were to go to a team like the Islanders and, and play in that very defensive system, I think he would do well. And you'd see his numbers bounce back, and then he played there for a year or two, and then he would go to another team, and then it would be terrible again. Like, <laughs> like it just, you know, depends on where he goes, Yeah, if he goes anywhere. Well, one way or another, I hope he gets a good change of scenery that helps him out. I know he's had a rough go these last few years, and he's taken a whole lot of flack, and... Uh, Again, we have to remember these are human beings and everything. So uh, I wish him all the best. I've, I've already shipped him off. 
Aaron. I'm not, he doesn't matter if he's being traded or bought out. He's gone. So uh, goodbye. And uh, I, I wish you all the best wherever you end up, uh, Martin Jones. There you go. Uh, moving on from him, I want to talk a little bit about another guy, um, Stephen A. Smith. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, the, the good, the bad, and the Stephen A. Um, All right. Yeah, go ahead, because it's, it's, well, we're back. We're back the on the, ESPN. The NHL is back on ESPN, which I'm very excited about, because that's what I kind of grew up watching, seeing outside of the Sharks, hockey outside of the Sharks. So getting the marquee matchups, like I was watching the Detroit-Colorado series yes. in the late 90s. That was just unreal. All those all-star players, all those, not even all-star, they're Hall of Fame players. Legends. Right, legends, yeah. Hall of Fame players. They're all in the Hall of Fame. It's just... That series was just unreal. So, um, anyway, the the music, the ESPN music, which is coming back. Nice. And the NHL Tonight Show, I watched all the time with Barry Melrose and and um, so, uh, blanking on his name now, but Steve Steve Levy uh, okay. used to host it. Um, I love those guys. Grew up with those guys. Anyway, I'm very excited it's back. I'm more excited because it's going to bring the NHL into more homes. More people are more eyes are going to see it. It's going to be good growth for the sport. I think it's fantastic. I don't always love ESPN. I don't always love what they do because they kind of treat hockey like a redheaded stepchild. Yes. No offense to redheaded stepchildren out there. But it, it's it's um, they treat it with less respect. And I wanted to bring this up, but you wanted to as well, so I'll let you go ahead to go with the Stephen A. Smith. I thing. just don't like him. Well, let's explain what it was. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Cause I don't I can't I can't bring up the bad memories. You just well, go ahead. <laughs> Steven I don't mind this either. Like, a long time ago, 10 years ago, I'd be pissed about it. Okay. Now I, I, I see the humor in it. And I see... It doesn't, it doesn't, pair, it doesn't go well f- to hockey fans. Right. It's, he's, not, he's not going after us. He's going after all the non-hockey fans. If you think okay. of it this way, you change your perspective. Okay. He's going after everyone that knows nothing about hockey. Mm-hmm. Right? And now... It's also, he's forced to do this because it is on ESPN now. You have okay. to think of it that way. Like, hey, Stephen A. Smith, you have this giant audience. Practically none of them watch hockey or know hockey or care about hockey. Do a short segment that's funny. Mm-hmm. Go with it. Okay, that's what he did. Did it come off as humorous to you? No, it came off as ignorant to me. But again, I'm a hockey fan, right? So it wasn't meant for you. Exactly. That's That's my, like... To me, it's like, man, that's so stupid. Why do they do that? And then I go, okay, think about it. This is meant for other people outside of hockey that are not fans. It's going to bring them in, at least a little bit. Maybe just a little bit. Get them interested. He's introducing names. He was talking about McDavid, right? Yeah. (laughs) Which which is great because the NHL has a problem with marketing. Right. They cannot get those young stars into people's homes and minds Mm -hmm. that don't watch hockey. You should know the top five guys in the hockey league, right? Yeah, you should. In every league. Let me you ask should you. know the top five guys in the NBA, yeah. top five guys in the NFL, top five, you know, all the sports. You should know them. At least the names. Is Patrick Kane still a top five guy? Name recognition. Because they named Patrick Kane as the best player in the NHL. ESPN did this. This is what I'm upset about. Stuff like this, okay? Can you at least, if you need Stephen A. Smith to push hockey to the people who don't know hockey on ESPN. I'm okay with that, I'm fine with that. What I don't like is put someone next to him who knows hockey so that he doesn't sound like a complete moron to the people who are actually tuning in already to watch hockey. Instead, you're hoping that he's gonna get this audience to show up and listen to Stephen A. Smith talk his drivel, whatever it is, but the, the people that are guaranteed to tune in to ESPN to watch hockey are hockey fans. So get somebody on there who can kind of jive with them a little bit, but not just him talking away. I'm, oh my goodness, dude! I was I, like, yeah, ugh, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't, I don't like Stephen A. Smith. I'm actually sick of Barry Melrose. Fair. I think they should get some new blood in there because he's been there for so long, and I think his shtick is old. Sure, he, he has a mullet, and, so he's and, a hockey expert. And and I'll take and I'll take Barry Melrose next to Stephen A. Smith if it means that somebody on ESPN knows something about hockey, uh, but I would rather have, like you said, I would rather have somebody... Steve some, Levy. Some new blood. To me is, is, his voice is awesome. It's, that's hockey to me. Him and... Okay. Uh, um, oh, my gosh. I'm, I, Gary Thorne. Gary Thorne's voice is hockey to me. Okay. Because he, he announced a lot of those games in the 90s. 
So that's that's all I have to say about ESPN. I'm, I'm happy that you know there's the contract is there and that they're going to be on TV still. They did, yeah, and they did <laughs> announce a lot of um, their reporters and stuff that will be joining them this season. There's a lot of good. new stuff and new people, so I think it's it's good. There's a lot it's a lot more diversity, uh, both men and women good. and people of color. So I think it's great that it's going to show hockey is for everyone. Yeah, no, I love that. So. Um, Hopefully, all that comes together really well, and they just came out of the gate the wrong way. So uh, let's give them a pass, I guess. Uh, if, if I can give Stephen A. Smith a pass, <laughs> I'm sure you guys can. So there you go. Uh, let's see. What are we moving on to now? I think we had some uh, fantasy, was it? Or what do we? Uh, fantasy hockey. Yeah. We are going to be doing fantasy hockey again. This time, I'm going to do a sign-up. I'm not going to refresh the league. So if you would like to play fantasy hockey, uh, you can send us an email to the Fin Factor at gmail.com there you go so send me an email uh, say you want to play fantasy hockey if uh, you don't have email you can hit us up on twitter as well I don't know if you don't have email go get email come on now email's free not that difficult yeah, I think hey, you by actually the way, need an email to play fantasy speaking hockey speaking of so. email and fantasy hockey now you received an email uh, from the gentleman who won it previously correct so last season we had two two leagues going on and I actually won the second league okay the first league uh, was Travis McLean, who I sent an email out, and about four weeks later, he emailed me saying, hey, did I win something? And I wrote back saying, yes, you did. <laughs> that was back on June 2nd. I haven't heard anything back. Obviously, that sentence ties with an exclamation point just based on how you, you said Absolutely. it just now. So Absolutely. There you go. Yes, you did. So, Travis McLean. McLean. <laughs> McLean, I don't know what you're planning. On. Die hard. I don't know what you're planning on doing here, buddy. But uh, reach back to us. We can get you your winnings or winning. I don't know if we still have. We still have it. You yeah. must have it. Yeah. Okay. There you well, go. Well, he won last year, so I'm like, what do you want? Because it was going to be the same prize. Do you want another hat and there shirt, or do you want something else? He won twice. Yeah. You should forfeit, <laughs> Mr. McLean. Whatever. Maybe regardless. we'll we'll give him something from the set. Maybe we'll give you this yeah. Timo clock because it's not Timo time, so you can have it. Cheers. I hope it's Timo time sometime this season, though. Claim your clock. That would be very nice. Right. We need Timo time this season. Uh, we always need Timo time. <laughs> uh, something else we need, by the way, and you'll notice that the set behind us is the same set that we've had for the beginning of, I mean, our this entire our season, tenure here. This right? is our season four. Yeah. So, um, you know, we've always talked about the uh, Studio B, kind of jokingly called it Studio B. Well, it's, it's a reality. The thing is, we, we are there. We're so close to there. The problem is uh, we just didn't have it ready in time for the start of this season. However, uh, we, we, it's, it's in movement right now. We're, we're getting it done. So this is going to probably go away um, sooner or later, but well, I don't we are, make any promises. But. We are going to do a live show on Friday. Okay, yeah, there So you go. we'll be here on this set for Friday. Right. And then after that, we'll have a new set by the new season in October. Hopefully, yeah, by, when, by the time Puck drops, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll be... In uh, different digs here, so um, just kind of exciting stuff. I'm I'm excited to see, uh, you know, what uh, the set design is going to look like and everything. So. What would you guys like to see on the set? There you go. Do you want to see a million bobbles like before? <laughs> Do you want to see more sharks paraphernalia, more clocks? So put that in toasters and flying tortillas. We'll put, put that it. in the comments down below. Let us know what you guys would like to see as part of the set, perhaps. And uh, We'll we, definitely we get toasters in there. Toaster? We'll throw one in there? Yeah. Maybe we hide a toaster uh, and we put it in different spots and we see if people can spot All the All season. Do you, see the, do you see the toaster now? <laughs> there you go. Okay, uh, to avoid a get on with it from Super Producer Jason, I think maybe we'll just uh, wrap this thing up. Is there anything else uh, to talk about here? No, no. I'm I'm just yeah. gonna say I'm excited uh, to be back in the chairs. I, doing the the green screen thing was fine. Uh, it's all well and good. It got you know the message across to the people. We were there for you uh, when we couldn't be here. <laughs> um, just pat myself on the back repeatedly. Um, but I, I'm excited. I'm excited to be back. I'm excited for this season. I'm excited for the draft that's coming up. I'm excited for free agency. There's a lot of stuff happening. The Sharks were not a very good team, but it's all about this offseason and seeing what Doug Wilson and company can do uh, to kind of reshape this team. With the uh, draft coming up, who do you want to see the Sharks draft in that seventh overall spot? Oh, man. Okay, so there's there's too many names that um, are kind of a little bit higher up, and I don't think they're going to fall. Mm -hmm. If Dylan Gunther falls, uh, you got to grab him. Um, I wouldn't be, oh, was it Kent Johnson or Johnston? I can't mm -hmm. remember if there's a T in there or not. I don't know. Um, and there was one other. And I, You want a forward. I, I want a forward. 
I want a four. I'll, I'll put it that way. I'll put it this way. I want best forward available. Okay, I'm done with defensemen for now. Uh, <laughs> I'm happy with the defense. Uh, just as it is right now, it's fine. Whatever. I'm, I'm good. We can always make a trade. Uh, but as far as uh, who I want to draft, I do want a forward. Same. Very much so. Yeah. I want a higher end prospect forward that will be ready in two years. Okay, and we'll maybe we'll wrap on this last point. Because the, the, there was talk about goalies, right? So there's uh, uh, Wallstat Wall and Kosa, Kosa, um, highly touted goaltenders. Um, whether or not you would take them in the seventh, maybe or seventh pick overall, probably not. But where do you think those guys ought to go? Because it seems like there's a little bit of hype around these guys, and this draft isn't a very strong draft. So if yeah. you have strong goalies or in a pool of otherwise not so strong skaters, where should they go? Uh, everything I've been reading is Wall Stats going to Ottawa's going to take him in like I think they're tenth okay. overall. I think right around tenth. The top nine guys are kind of like those are the top nine guys. They're kind of away from everyone else. I think once you get past on the under the tenth pick, that's when you're going to see people taking goalies maybe a little earlier than normal. Mm -hmm. Wall Stats supposed to be the stud that's going to be the next Carey Price kind of guy who's going to be in the league for a yeah. long time and be in the league early as a young age. So I. I don't know. I, I still don't think the Sharks should take that seventh overall. I think they can get a better skater um, before that. So, And I want them to get the best player available. Yeah. Um, I don't really have a preference. I, I really I, I still want a forward as well. Yeah. I don't want another top-end defenseman, um, even though you should take the best player available yeah. in the drafts. But whatever. We need we need more offensive power. I mean, I look at it as our our blue chip prospect right now is Ryan Merkley, right? So uh, he's that's Bordalo is another one. Okay, sure, Bordalo is yeah. one. Um, but uh, you know, Merkley's had the time to develop too. So if he's supposed to be some ready soon, I would hope. Um, then I guess you could backfill that. But otherwise, you know, we we've we've got our our top um, defensive prospect. I we, I'd rather have an extra. <laughs> A top forward mm. uh, because you got six guys that suit up on D, but you got 12 that suit up as forwards. I I'll take an extra forward before I go back looking for another defenseman. That's just my take. So, uh, Doug Wilson, uh, best forward available, and Casey Zizekas or, or Nick Bonino. Uh, there you go. We've solved all the problems. Tell us would... what you think. <laughs> what do you want to see the Sharks do in the draft? And don't say Wall Stack. See, Aaron has learned. Aaron it likes to talk now for the uh, the, the fan uh, uh, comments, the, the interaction. There you go. So, uh, hopefully we'll have a lot more of that as this season rolls along because we're looking forward to getting uh, some more lives going on. Again, don't forget uh, to like and subscribe. Subscribe so that you can see when we are going live. I'll tell you right now, we're going to do it this Friday, but it's going to happen uh, more often. And when we do go live, obviously hit that notification bell and then you will know when that happens. Join in. It's a lot of fun. We get people that are Sharks fans. We've had people that is usually during the playoffs. <laughs> Blues fans, Vegas fans, uh, everybody kind of coming so it's in. it's been a while is what you're saying. Chirping us a bit sometimes. <laughs> why not? But, you know, it's uh, it's all in good fun. And uh, our community is always nice to them. Yeah. And once they figure that out, they're nice back. So in any case, uh, we do appreciate you guys tuning in. I'm looking forward to this season, and hopefully you are as well. Please feel free to tune in uh, anytime that we've got an episode for you. So that's going to wrap it for episode 123. For Super Producer Jason, I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And we will see you guys on Friday. On Friday. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.